In this tutorial, we'll be looking at setting up the Fruity Vocoder in one of your tracks. A vocoder can be used for a myriad of applications, not least of which is the classic speaking synth effect. The basis of the theory behind vocoding is the idea that the sonic character of one sound source, the modulator, be used to modulate another sound source called the carrier. In the speaking synth effect, this will translate as the voice being the modulator used to impose the voice character onto a synth sound character. So to run the vocoder in FL Studio, you'll need two sound sources each assigned to their own channel in the mixer and then panned to opposite sides of the stereo spectrum. By default, the modulator is panned to the left and the carrier is panned to the right. In this example, we will put a drum beat into a Fruity Slicer plugin and then set its target output to track 3 in the mixer and pan it hard left. Then we will insert a SimSynth plugin, set its target output to track 4 and pan it hard right. Next we need to insert a vocoder plugin and we will put this into one of the channel inserts of track 5. To route the audio from our two sources into the vocoder, we need to set the output of tracks 3 and 4 to track 5. To make this easier to do, I'll right click on the track name of track 5 and change it to vocoder. Now I can assign the output of tracks 3 and 4 to the vocoder track. If I press play, we won't hear anything, but I will select the synth synth in the step sequencer so that it can receive MIDI input and trigger some notes from my MIDI keyboard. Now we can hear the synth sound being vocoded by the drum beat, and it sounds like a very tonal drum beat. Now we can start playing with the various parameters in the Fruity Vocoder plugin window. By default, the plugin sets the vocoder to 16 bands. This is a good setting to provide medium clarity. By clicking on the number of bands selector, you can increase or decrease the number of bands. The less bands, the more basic the vocoder sound, and coincidentally, the more vintage. The more bands, the more detail from the modulator will be passed onto the carrier sound. With more bands, however, comes a corresponding increase in CPU usage. For now, we'll just leave it at 16. At the top of the vocoder window are parameters that relate to filtering of the modulator signal before it is vocoded. The format slider affects the tone of the sound. A good analogy to explain formats is shown when you hear two notes of the same pitch, one sung by a man and the other sung by a woman. Despite the notes being the same pitch, it is the formats in the sound that indicate the gender of the singer. The min and max knobs together act as a bandpass filter to limit the frequencies of the modulator that are actually used. The scale knob alters the emphasis on the frequencies used to modulate. The further to the left the knob is turned, the more lower frequencies are emphasised, and vice versa to the right. The BW knob stands for bandwidth, and controls the actual bandwidth of each vocoder filter band. The lower this is set, the more metallic the sound, while higher or wider bandwidth values yield a softer sound. You really are the best judge for working out the best setting for this. The envelope section controls the attack and decay for the envelope follower. The envelope follower controls the fade in and out times of the frequency bands tracked through the modulator. The mix section allows you to mix in various levels of modulator and carrier signals along with a wet vocoded sound. You can also flip which sources are modulator or carrier by clicking between the R and L. The LEDs above each signal name allow you to solo the sound from either of the signal sources or the output. The vocoder band display gives you extensive control over your sound as well. Each band has its own volume control which you change by clicking on the illuminated bar in each band column. When you do this, the bar will change to a yellow colour, indicating that you can drag to change multiple band volumes by painting with a mouse. You can also change the slope on the filter used for each band by selecting 1, 2 or 3 at the bottom of the display. Clicking on the hold button will hold the shape of the current modulated frequency and apply that to all notes played on the carrier. This is very useful if you apply some automation to the hold function in your FL Studio project.